Bless his holy name. I appreciate him. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. My heart, hallelujah, belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. All the honor belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. Belongs to you. Amen. You see, our hallelujah, our worship belongs to the Lord. What is the first way that we worship the Lord? By our body, making our body a living sacrifice. It's a service, it's a worship to the Lord. It belongs unto Him. If you don't make your body a living sacrifice to the Lord, then it will be a living sacrifice to the devil. You see, that's why you see people, either they, have, they fulfill the will of God or the will of the devil. There is no neutral will. It's either of the Lord or of the devil. Praise Jesus. So when we are singing praises to the Lord, let it be with understanding. Understanding. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Our hallelujah belongs to you. Praise Jesus. You see, you are confessing it that your hallelujah belongs to the Lord. Your worship belongs to the Lord. Your shout of victory belongs to the Lord. You are announcing to the devil and his host. You see, that you belong to the Lord. Your worship, your hallelujah is unto the Lord, not unto the devil. You are not here to fulfill the will of the devil. You are making a, a powerful declaration. Praise Jesus. Sing it loud with understanding. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, Jesus. You Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. The God that fight our battles for us. The God that is our help in time of trouble. We bless your name. Our great healer. Our great shepherd. We thank you, Father. We appreciate you. For you did not deliver us to the will of our enemies. You are the God that prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Father, we thank you. From the beginning of this year, you have been by our side. Yes, you never leave us, neither forsake us. We are grateful, O oh Lord. For with you, we 
can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Father, we bless you. For by your blood, we have been made more than conquerors. Hallelujah unto you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are a miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Thank you, Father. As your word will be going. 
going forth. Let every sickness in the body be gone in the name of Jesus. Let every pain in the body be gone in the name of Jesus. Let every confusion disappear in the name of Jesus. Let every body in the heart disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. He said we should come unto you, all you the labor and every learning, and you will give us rest. We have come unto you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, let everybody in the heart of anyone here be a stain for your rest, be a stain for your peace, in the name of Jesus. For you said we should come to you, and you will give us rest. And we have come. Let your name be glorified. Abba, Father, we bless you. Let your name be glorified, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. You see, we're going to look at the power of God and the wisdom of God. The power of God and the wisdom of God. Praise Jesus. Before I, 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 I proceed, I would like to share something with you. Praise Jesus. You see, one man of God called me and said he would like to see me. He said something happened to him. He didn't know me before. And uh, as he was praying, grieving, the Lord led him to a lady, to a sister. He said the Lord told him that that sister would tell you who to go and see. And as he went to see the sister, the sister, as he told the sister what was happening, the sister said, oh, I know a brother that you can meet. Mm. The brother will, will pray with you and counsel you. And uh, that man of God collected my number from the sister and he reached out to me and we are here, we met. So he said, that was some people, you see, that they were asking for him to be, to pastor them in the church. And the church, they have, uh, they have their headquarters somewhere, also in California. Mm -hmm. And uh, these people said they are their grandmas and grandpas, that they want him to pastor them. And he said he would go and pray about it. And he prayed. And he said he told the Lord, if it is your will for me to be in this branch, let the headquarter move me there. And behold, he was posted to that church. And he began to pastor them. And God was doing a lot of miraculous things in their midst. A lot of good things happening, healing, all kind of things. But they were few. And uh, he said what made him grieve, that the same people that were asking for him to come, they now began to conspire against him. And he said they were few. And he said two of them, their grandmothers, elderly people, were talking to him. And as they were talking to him, what they wanted to do, and the Spirit of God was revealing to him that they are lying. They want to do the opposite. They want to do the opposite. So he said as they were talking to him, he could perceive their thoughts. You see? And one of them could not look straight into his eyes anymore because maybe that could discern that this man already perceived our motive. But the other woman was talking and he said he was angry, but God really helped him. He could not, you see, expose his anger. You see. So he said, it was like if these people at their age could still be lying, destroying the garden of the people of God, that how that how could this be people at their age? If at this age they can still be doing this to be used by the devil to destroy the church, that at their age they are the ones that are supposed to be interceding for the church. You see, that he was he was he was disturbed, discouraged. You see, and he said, he remember what the scripture says in Jeremiah 30, 50, verse 36, that sword is upon the liars. You see, he said. He said a lot of things that even Psalm 101, verse 7 says, He that walketh the sea shall not dwell in my house. Liars will not tie in my side. That these old women, they know the truth. At their age, he said he was so sorrowful for them. That they were the one crying for him to come. And God let, he said he was not praying. That God not told him, if they reject you, it is not you they reject. It is me that they have rejected. That don't worry, if they destroy that gathering, they are the ones that lose. He said, but he was discouraged and that would continue. That was why the Lord led him to that sister and the sister brought him to me. I now told him something. I said, what you have said, what, what you are going through, he 
is a sermon that every one of us need to learn from, including myself. And I told him, the reason why God told you to come to me is to tell you what Jesus did to such kind of people. I took him to John chapter 2, verse 24 to 25. He said Jesus did not commit himself unto men because he knew that they are flesh. Verse 25, he says, he knew nobody, he knew nobody to tell him who they have because he knew all men. You see, then I took him to Luke 20, 22 from verse 31 to 32. Jesus told Peter, the devil has planned to, to sweep you, to consume you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. I said those people, they have been hijacked by the devil, by the thieves. So the only thing, you don't let what they do discourage you. Don't put your trust in them. Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew they are men. They can do, today they can say, Hosanna. You see, he's the son of God. Hosanna to the son of God. Tomorrow they will be the one crucify him, crucify him. You see. So I said, just pray for them. And as the Lord already ministered to you, if they reject you, they have not reje it's, it's not you, it's God that they have, reject they have rejected. You see, this man, you see, a grown-up man, he didn't know me before, he couldn't hold it, he was crying. I had to hold his hand, I prayed with him. I said, keep praying for them. It is not left for them to repent. If not, at that age, only God knows what will be their end. You see, so I really prayed with him, and the Lord strengthened him. He gained his courage back. I said, don't, don't quit. Keep going. If they, tell, they say they don't want you anymore, they drive me away, leave. You see, there are things that they are supposed to be where such things happen in the scripture. There will be a testimony against them. You see, praise Jesus. So I prayed with him, but God so good, his strength was renewed. So he went back, and uh, since that time, he said he had peace, and that brought joy to my soul, my son. I told him what is going on with you, what you have shared. It's a sermon that every one of us should learn, not to commit yourself to anybody. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. They might be crying that they need you today. Tomorrow, they will be the one to crucify you. Don't worry. Praise Jesus. So we're going to pray before we go into the, today's message. Can somebody please open to 2 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 31. 2 Samuel. Samuel chapter 15. We're going to read verse 31. And also, thank you. People trying to get on, but the, the code, they need the code. I see uh, Sister Cynthia is also on the, on the Zoom. Thank you for joining us, Sister okay. Cynthia. So she got on. Mm. Okay. Thank you for joining us. And then there's another lady. Uh, 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 thank you. I don't see her. No, I don't see her. I'll send them the passcode. I'll send it to them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Cynthia. Praise Jesus. Uh, Brother Javon, please help us read Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 31. Please read it loud so that the people on the Zoom can also hear. And one told David, I hit the foul. I hit the foul into yeah. foolishness. Do you have it? Yeah. Can you please read it? Now, David had been told, Ahitophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. So David prayed, Lord, turn Ahitophel's counsel into foolishness. You see, when Absalom, the son of David, tried to dethrone David, one of the, 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 the advisor of David is counselor, Ahitophel, very wise man. You see, so 
they, they came to tell him that Ahithophel is one of the conspirators. And David knew what that means. That Ahithophel is a very wise man. You see? And David prayed one prayer. He said, Oh Lord, turn the counsel of Ahithophel to foolishness. And that was exactly what the Lord did. Because he prayed that prayer from his heart. It was an heartfelt prayer. Because you see, that if Ahithophel prevailed with his counsel, he is finished. So he had to pray. And the God did it. And the counsel of Ahithophel was rejected. And as such, David had his victory. We're going to pray. You see, they conspired against David. And David prayed, the oh Lord my God, turn the counsel of Ahithophel to foolishness. We're going to pray. You see, in the moment of prayer, I don't want you to joke with this. You don't know the angels that is passing by you right now. Amen. If you want to stand, any time that prayer is going on, let it come from your heart. Forget what has come around you, what was with you before you got here. Praise Jesus. Say, oh Lord, my God, oh, my God. any evil cancer any evil against me, Father, turn them to foolishness in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, turn them to foolishness in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Say, any wicked advice against me, Father, turn them to foolishness in the name of Jesus. Conspiracy against me, my God, turn them to foolishness in the name of Jesus. Call upon them to foolishness in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise Jesus. Let somebody also go to First John chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for devil sinned from the beginning. For this reason, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. And it destroyed it. The works of the devil. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Say, any plan of the wicked to destroy my life will not prosper in the name of Jesus. Say, by the mercy of God, I will not fulfill the will of the devil in the name of Jesus. I will not fulfill evil prophecy in the name of Jesus. I will not fulfill the plans of my enemy in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Say, every works of darkness against my life, against my children, against my wife, in the name of Jesus, be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Say, every plans of the wicked to destroy my life will not prosper. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Say, every plans of the wicked to get me down. Their plans will not prosper in the name of Jesus. It will not prosper in the name of Jesus. Say, because it is written, Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Therefore, every works of the devil, every plans of the devil against my soul, against my spirit, against my body, against my arms, against my arm, against my children, against my grandchildren, against my great grandchildren. Against all that concerns me, against my ministry, let them all be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, let them be destroyed. Let them be destroyed. Let them be destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Say, as the Lord liveth, as the Spirit lives, before whom we gathered, I will not fulfill the will of man. In the name of Jesus, I will not fulfill my own will, but the will of God. In the name of Jesus. I will not fulfill the will of man in the name of Jesus. Say so any group of people that want to use me to fulfill their selfish will in the name of Jesus, I refuse it. I refuse it. I reject it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let us pray one prayer before we proceed. Say, oh Lord my God, give me understanding of your word. Let your word enter into me and bring me light and bring me understanding and bring me wisdom in the name of Jesus. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus mighty Say, any power any that wants to deny me or bless you from the Lord this evening, you that power, you will not prosper. I bind you in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Say, oh Lord, my God, I am ready to receive from you. Have mercy upon me. Tonight, meet my expectation, oh Lord. Meet my expectation, oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Say that Lord will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. In the name of Jesus. My God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Say where men are cast down, where people are cast down, I will say there's a lifting up. There's a lifting up. There's a lifting up. In the name of Jesus. See, where things are difficult for people, things shall be easy for me. Things shall be smooth for me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise Jesus. Let us, every one of us, open to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. It says, But unto them which are called, both Jews and the Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But unto them which are called, both Jews and the Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. You see, the apostle revealed the two dimension of Jesus. Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. You see, both of them, there are two ministries that you cannot separate. They go together. You see, there are two powerful ministries, two powerful dimensions of Christ that represent the full Godhead, the fullness of God. Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Please follow this message. It will bless you. You see, what I'm about to share with you is not only meant for pastors, but for every believer. Every believer. If you are a Christian and you are not experiencing a cancerous Christ as the power of God and as the wisdom of God, then you are not following Jesus. Follow me as I follow Christ. You see, this is not... See, all of us has been called and given the ministry of reconciliation. No one in Christ that has not been called. Every one of us is called. Not only somebody that stands before people preaching. Every believer must encounter Jesus as the power of God and the wisdom of God. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. So let us look at the aspect of the wisdom of God. You see, praise Jesus. You see the same First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 7. He said, but we speak wisdom. Hallelujah. We speak wisdom. Of God in the mystery. You see, we speak wisdom of God in the mystery. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery. Even hidden wisdom. Even hidden wisdom which God had ordained before the world unto our glory. Yes. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. Yes. But we speak wisdom of God in a mystery, even hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. You see, unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not crucify the Lord of glory. You see the wisdom of God. They didn't know killing Jesus is the power of God. It is that is the, that is giving birth to salvation. That will make Christ to live in each of us that are His. So to them, they thought they were killing Him, destroying Him, not knowing being crucified. He was fulfilling purpose. Hallelujah! Say by the power of God, I will fulfill my purpose. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. You see, you see Moses. Moses, when he was born, 
by the wisdom of God, even the daughter of Pharaoh took Moses, they nurtured Pharaoh in their palace. They took very good care of Pharaoh. They took care of him like a prince of the palace. Not knowing that is the person that's coming to destroy them. He did wisdom. Moses was put in the water. You know why? Because God wanted Moses to learn about water. Right from his childhood. Because he's going to deliver Israel. Going to take them through the water. So he was to learn about water right from his childhood. Hidden wisdom of God. You see, wisdom of God. Christ, wisdom of God. Praise Jesus. You see, in, in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 14, it says, I have counsel and sound wisdom. I am understanding and I have strength. I have counsel and sound wisdom. I am understanding and I have strength. Praise Jesus. Proverbs chapter 4. He said, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. In all that getting, get understanding. You see, I want somebody to help me. Somebody open to Proverbs chapter 4. Somebody open to Proverbs chapter 22. You see, you see Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. It says, My son, Attend to my word. Give ears to my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your hearts. For they are life to them that find them. And else to their flesh. You see. Now, let somebody read Proverbs 4.21. No. Earlier? Oh, okay. No. Proverbs 4.21. Let somebody else go to Proverbs 22, verse 12. Thank you. Who is in Proverbs 22? I want us to follow together. Proverbs 22, verse 12. 22, 12? 22, 12? Yes. Um, the eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge. Hold on. You see, Proverbs 22, verse 12 says, The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge. And Proverbs 4, verse 21 says, Let the word of the Lord never depart from your eyes. Because the eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge. That is, you have to be beholding God. Look straight into his eyes. How do you do that? By reading his word. When you are looking at the word of God, you are looking straight to the eyes of God. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 18, chapter 3, verse 18 says, But we are with open face as beholding the glory of God. We are with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of God and are changed to the same image. From glory to glory, even by the spirit of the living God. You see, so where you need wisdom, you want to encounter Christ as the wisdom of God, his word will make you wise. That's where you will encounter the wisdom of God. You see, Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You see, do you know what that means? No matter the school, university you've been to, even the best university in this whole world, they can only teach you, impart you with skills, knowledge. You see, but they can never impart you with wisdom. When you need wisdom, according to the scriptures, you have to go to the university of the fear of the Lord. Because the scripture says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So how do you know about the fear of the Lord? Please somebody go to Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2, read from verse 1 to verse 6. <clears throat> my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lift up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid, hid treasures, then, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. Thank you. You see, where you incline your ears to the word of the Lord, where you keep the word of the Lord in you, where you search for it as gold, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. The way you understand the fear of the Lord, wisdom will begin to set in. 
But the scripture says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, I hope you are following me. Praise Jesus. You see, Christ, the wisdom of God, and the power of God, the two of them, those are the full dimension of Jesus. Those are the full, those are the, those are the full, full representative of Jesus. You see, the full Godhead, power and wisdom. You see, look at when Aaron wanted to kill Jesus when he was a baby. Even the, in Egypt that God had delivered his children from, he said they should take the boy and run to Egypt. Can you see wisdom? So it means somebody that was your enemy, that is your enemy today, can still bless you the next minute. That is why, you see, don't hate anybody because of what somebody else tells you about the person. Don't inherit another person's enemy. Because there is no permanent friends. Neither is permanent enemies. And be, see, the table is going to turn one day. And when it turns to your side, you have to de de defend yourself. You see, I hope you are following me. Praise Jesus. This is not meant just for pastor. It's for every believer. You have to encounter Jesus as the wisdom. You see, Psalm 119 verse 98. He said, through that commandment, thou art made me wiser than my enemy. You see, Psalm 119 verse, verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and light to my path. Psalm 119 verse, verse 130. He said, the entrance of your word give me light and understanding to the simple. You see, Psalm 19, verse 8, it said, your status, hallelujah, are right. You see, rejoicing the hearts. Your commandment is pure, enlightening the eyes. So when you have the word of God in you, you will be wise. You see, praise Jesus. So how then do you express Christ as the power of God? Hmm. Praise Jesus. Please go to Acts chapter 6. Let's read verse 4. You see, the apostle, they said, we shall give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the world. Then you see, prayer and the ministry of the world. You see, prayer and the word of God. Prayer is the one that will set up the power in you. That will make you to encounter the power of God. Encounter Christ as the power of God. Because you already have power when you are in Christ. And you shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and uttermost part of the earth. But that power needs something to stir it up. Because it is up to you. That power can be idle or be active. But you need something to make it active. That was what Apostle, Apostle Paul told Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6, he said, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God in you. You see, because if you don't stir up that gift in you, you're not getting any power. No power will be demonstrated through you. Praise Jesus. Christ as the power of God. You see, the two ministries, when you leave the ministry of the power, which is prayer, out of it, you see, you only committed to the ministry of the world. That is why you see preachers preaching like a storyteller. There is no power in the world. And this gospel of Christ is said unto all that believe. You see, is the power of God unto salvation. You see, and 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20 says, Thy kingdom is not in word, but in power. You see, you see, when you only study the word of God, of course you'll be wise. But the power of God is not going to be. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Christ is not.
not see. He did not reveal himself. He did not bring him, himself as, as a half person to some people and full person to some people. No. See, he made himself available to all of us. And the completeness of Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So you need to pursue the two for you to have the fullness of Jesus in your life. You see, when you, are, when you just study the world and you are not committed, you are not encountering the power of God, you do not submit yourself continually to the ministry of prayer. When you are preaching the world, it will be as if you are telling stories. It will be as if you are just come to tell story. And you see many preachers, many people, they take the book, the word of God, the way they talk about it. It is the truth they are saying. Well, God is there's no power. There's no power. Oh. Where should I begin from? Hallelujah. Let us first go to see what Jesus did. Matthew 14. Matthew 14. Please let somebody read it from verse 16. Matthew 14. Yes, Matthew, Matthew 14, sorry? Huh? No, 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 we're going to go there, Matthew 14. Matthew 14, read it from verse 16, please. Please read it loud, so that the people on the Zoom can also hear. 14, 16? Matthew 14 from 16, yes. Okay. But Jesus said unto them, yes. Give ye not depart, give ye them to eat. Oh, and they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and two fishes. Look, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. And they had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. And straight away, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him until the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Hold on. You see, after Jesus performed big miracles, feeding people, multitude, with just five loaves of bread, what did Jesus do? He sent the multitude away. Even the disciples did not hinder him. He went to the mountain to pray. He was there alone. What was Jesus doing after, after performing that miracle? He was refilling his tank with fire. He was refilling. You see, communicating with the Father, chanting with the Father. You see, having intercourse with the Father. Refilling his tank that was empty. You see, if it was a man, he would be shouting, Oh, God is wonderful today. Oh, a lot of miracles was done today. Jesus did not mention anything. He went back to the mountain alone. He was, the scripture says, he was there alone, praying. That's why you see many people preaching with empty tank. Many, maybe, if, you even doubt if they even have a tank. You see, can you imagine after performing that huge miracle, he went to the mountain scripture says he was there alone praying. That is God. You see, Christ, the power of God. You see, when you neglect prayer, you can never encounter Christ as the power of God in your life. That was why James chapter 5 verse 6 says, oh, amplifier version. He said, an endless acts felt Continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Dynamics in his working. What makes power available? Prayer. Prayer. Not just prayer. An earnest, outfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Dynamics in his working. If you want to encounter Christ, And if you look at verse 13 of that uh, of James chapter 5, he said, Is any among 
find you afflicted, let him pray. Not let him complain. Not even preach. You see, not talk about it. Not blame God about it. Not blame anybody about it. Let him pray. Because when you pray, it will make tremendous power available. When you pray. Because the strength you want to use to talk about it, to complain, to cry, you can also invest the same strength to pray and make power available. You see, you see, there are so many things we go through in our lives that we are not supposed to go through when you are submitting yourself continually to the ministry of prayer. You see, you know what prayer is? Prayer means you are not rebelling because God has already told you to pray. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. So when you refuse to pray, it means you are rebelling against the Lord. It means it's a sin against the law. It also means you, you, you are being proud before the law. That you don't need it. You see, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Praise Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Say, I receive grace. I receive grace to pray at all times. I receive grace to encounter Christ as the power of God and wisdom of God in the name of Jesus. You see, let somebody go to Leviticus chapter 6. Let somebody open to Revelation chapter 1. If you are Leviticus, please read verse, 6, verse 12 to 13. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. Yes. It shall not be put out, and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. Who shall burn wood on it? The priest. The priest. You see, the fire on the altar shall be burning, shall not be put out. The priest shall burn wood on it every morning. You see, verse 13 says, the fire on the altar shall not be put out, shall continue to be burned. Who are the priests? Who is in Revelation chapter 1? Read verse 6. Uh, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Who, who are the priests now? We. He has made us to be priests. And Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12 says, The priest should burn wood on it every morning so that the fire will continue to burn. Are you following me? So that you will continue to encounter Christ as the power of God. Because it's the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man that makes tremendous power available. You see, this is not only meant for preachers, or I mean for pastors. But every believer, as you are in Christ, you must be able to encounter Christ as the power of God and wisdom of God. Then you can turn and maintain your victory in Christ Jesus. For prayer is a daily necessity for daily battle. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Now let us go. You see, the, from the book of Matthew, Luke, I mean, Mark, Luke, you see, John and Acts. Let us leave the book of Acts for now. You see, Matthew, Mark, Luke, you see, and John, they were all about Jesus. All this encounter with the Pharisees, about his crucifixion, and about the resurrection. You see, but the book of Acts, that is the foretouch. That is why it is called Act. It is time to act. You see, the apostles, they were human beings like us. They were acting the word of God. They were raising the dead. They were healing the sick. They were cleansing the lame. Because Jesus, they were with Jesus. From Matthew to John. And in the book of Acts, chapter 1, Jesus left. And the Holy Ghost came upon them. In Acts chapter 2, from verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. 
You see, and suddenly a club, a tongue, like a cloven tongue as of a fire, appeared and sat upon each tongue. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see, so when you want to see what the church of God looks like, go and study the book of Acts. They were a human beings like you, myself. They were not the spectators. They were acting the word of God. Because Jesus said, go and heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, freely you receive, freely shall you give. And they were acting on, that, on those words. That is why you have the book of Acts. They were acting all the command. They were acting all the mandate. Go into the whole world and baptize them in the name of God the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. You see, and the, the apostles, they did that in the book of Acts. So when you want to know what the church of God looks like, go to the book of Acts. And these people, they were praying in order to encounter Christ and the power of God and the wisdom of God because they know they were in the means of serpent and scorpions. You see, Say, oh Lord my God, oh, my God. Revive, your church. revive your church in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Arise, arise and revive the church. Revive the church. Revive, the church. revive your church. Revive, the church. Revive, the church. Revive, the church. revive your church. Revive your church in Jesus' mighty name. You see, on the last Friday, I was on a Zoom prayer meeting with the people of God. And I was telling them, what would the Lord lays in my heart to pray about? I was telling them one of the things I told them. Let us pray that let us have the real church. You see? And as one of them was praying, the Spirit of God spoke to me. If they like, let them pray. Till Jesus come, they're not going to experience my power. He said, because my people are not coming together in one accord. When you look at the book of Acts, they were in one accord. Singleness of hearts. You see, you see pastors fighting themselves and they still come to the pulpit to preach. How do you expect the power to manifest? You see, you see the one I told you that pastor, that one pastor shared with me. The people that cry for him to be ministering to them, the same people want to destroy the church. How will you expect the power of God to find his expression in their midst? You see, this is, that is what the Spirit of God he said. This is what is killing the church. For God is holy. He cannot act in contrary to his word. And I tell you, the church of America and the whole world, they need to wake up. The church in America Because it is only in the Church of America that see that prayer is missing. Mm. Compared to where I have been to, I have been in Europe by the grace of God. In different places in Europe, I have been in Africa the same way. You see, you see, the Church in America. You see, if care is not taken, Christ will do like it. You pray for mercy not to be so. Some of people are not coming together in one accord. And you know what the, what the scripture says in Psalm 133? How good and pleasant it is for good people of God to come together in unity. For they are not commanded blessing. You see? So when you come together in unity, there's a, there's a blessing already. Praise Jesus. Let us go to the book of Acts. Let us start from chapter 3. You see how the disciples, the apostles, how they encounter the power of God, how they act the word of God, 
how they fulfill what Jesus told them. Jesus said in John 14 verse 12, Verily I say unto you, whosoever believes in me, the work I do also shall he do. He shall do greater work because I go to my father. All what Jesus did, apostles did it. They raised the dead. They held the lame. You see, praise Jesus. Yes. Acts chapter 3. Let us read it from verse 1. Okay. <clears throat> now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Being oh, the hold on, hold on. You see, that, that verse 1 says, Peter and John, they went up together into the temple. At when? The hour of prayer. At the hour of prayer. You see, you know the Jews, they pray three times. They have the, the third hour. The, the third hour is 9 a.m. The, the, the sixth hour is 12 noon. And the ninth hour is the 3, p, is 3 p.m. So they were going, you see, they went to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. See what will happen at the hour of prayer. Read on this. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms of them that enter into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fast, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. And he took him by that right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. What, where did that happen? At the hour of prayer. You see, if they had not given themselves to the ministry of prayer, they would have denied that lame, that lame of his healing. You see, a lot of miracles. See, even here, many times when I'm praying, you hear I will say, who has so, so, so pain, sickness, and people come out. When did it happen? At the hour of prayer. That is what prayer does. Because he's the one that makes the power of God available. But when you deny that prayer, when you refuse to stand up before the God in you, you see, you will even deny people of their prayer. You see, the apostles, they knew what prayer is. They did not use the hour of prayer to go and do something else. Because they know what prayer we do. Say every hour of prayer that I participate, I will encounter Christ as the power of God in the name of Jesus. My needs shall be met. All my needs shall be met at the hour of prayer in the name of Jesus. Say I receive grace to pray in the name of Jesus. I will not leave the hour of prayer to do something else in the name of Jesus. At the hour of prayer, I will be committed to it and I will be blessed. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus, my name. You see what happened at the hour of prayer. If you deny that moment, not only do you deprive yourself, you deny many people also of what God would have done when you set the atmosphere on fire. Because we are, we are human beings. We don't know everything. Only God knows everything. But when you began to pray, you, because you are not praying to any man, you are chanting with the Father. You see, when you begin to pray, you, all suddenly you will be transported into the spirit realm. You see, and as such, you will have access to the secret of God. And that is also, we give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That is why the scripture says, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, the two are the completion of Christ. Even Jesus demonstrated it. He was at the mountain alone, praying. Not even disciples hinder him from going to be alone with the Father. When it's time for me to pray, even the little, they cannot come to disturb me. Everywhere is shut down. Say in the name of Jesus, from this moment henceforth, 
and we begin to encounter Christ and the power of God and the wisdom of God in the name of Jesus. You see, when the world, you see, it is easy to know who has submitted himself to the ministry of prayer and of the world. When they are preaching, you will feel the power. But when those that have only submit themselves to the ministry of the world, it will be like a storytelling. Because God himself, he demonstrated it for us to learn from. Always alone, praying. To refill his tank. You see, the scripture says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 30 says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but of wood and of earth, some unto honor, some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, prepared for the master, master use, and made for the master use, prepared for every good work. You see? Do you know what that means? It means through prayer, you can pray your way from the vessel of wood, from the vessel of earth, into vessel of silver, and also into vessel of gold. And as such, you will be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, made for the master use, prepare unto every good work. Prayer, that is what you need. And the world, because it is the world that will guide you what to pray about by the leading of the Holy Ghost. You don't pray your will, you pray the will of the Father. Because he said, Let the will be done on earth. That is why the two ministries, the word and the power, which is prayer, you cannot do without them. You cannot live one, one for another. They go together. Amen. That is where you can actually and finally encounter Jesus as the power and the wisdom of God. That is where you can encounter Jesus as the Godhead of God. That is where you can encounter God in fullness. Hallelujah. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. See, it's either you pray or you die. It's either you pray or you die. When I mean die, first of all, what will happen is spiritual death. Then things will not come to make your house, to make your body your house. You see, he said, when an unclean spirit go out of a man, when they go up and down, see where not to go, they will come back and see if he's still better, and go and bring several more wicked spirits, and come and live there. And he said, the end of that man will be worse than the beginning. You have to do what? You have to stir up the fire in you, not to be idle. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. The book of Acts. Soon up and we will pray. Say, I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. And I will triumph in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What happened at the hour of prayer? Go to Acts chapter 10. No, let's go to chapter 4 first. Chapter 4. And read it from verse 24 to 33. Let us listen and see. Acts chapter 4 is going to read from verse 24 to verse 33. Yes, please read it. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. They said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. It is. Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Hold on there. What were they doing? They were praying according to what? To the word of God. You see the two ministries. Go ahead, please. For a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together for to do what, 
whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants, that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Amen. Go ahead. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. And when they had what? Prayed. When they had prayed, what had happened? The place was shaken. Yes, speak for that. Where, there, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Hold on. Did, what made all the ghosts, what made them to be filled with the Holy Ghost now? Prayer. 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 Oh. You can never encounter Christ and the power of God without prayer. Because only God in you needs you to talk to him. Because you need to know either you know who you are. You need to know either you know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You need to stand with him. You need to communicate with him. That is why you also speak in the Holy Ghost. You chant in the Holy Ghost. When they had prayed, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word with what? With boldness. You see, that was why Apostle Paul was asking for prayer that all trials may be given to him, that he will boldly open his mouth to make known the mystery of the gospel of Christ. It is prayer that will give you utterance. It is through prayer that you will receive utterance. You will receive boldness. You see. You see, myself, when during one of my time with the Lord, intimacy, like the way a father will warn his son, he warned me very, very specifically, very profoundly. You must never preach my word without prayer. Mm. Mm. That I must never preach his word without prayer. Because he wants to do so much with me. And without prayer, nothing is happening. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Which was why he also led me to write a prayer book. So many don't even know how to pray. They don't even know what to pray about. And they are suffering. What are the campers doing? Did they even understand that Christ is the power of God? Did they even know how to encounter Christ as the power of God? Oh, hallelujah. 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 And when they had prayed, the place was what? Go to Mark, Acts chapter 16, read verse 25. Acts 16, verse 25. I'm going to wait for them. Okay. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Hold on. What caused the earthquake? Prayer! In the midst of the affliction, in the midst of persecution, what did the scriptures say? Says, is anyone among is anyone among you afflicted? Let him pray. God, that pray. The moment you begin to pray, suddenly strength will come, boldness will come, and as such, you begin to see the power being demonstrated. You see, you say prayer. Nobody's getting healed. Have you ever prayed for a sick person? Have you ever prayed for a dead person to now see? Hallelujah. Acts chapter 10. And we found see. This is this is what this is the picture of us, of the church. This is what we should be like. But this is the church right here. This is the acting of the word of God. When Jesus has ascended to heaven and he sent down the, the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see, wherever we cry, Abba, Father. You see what the apostles did? By the power, after they received the Holy Ghost, they did not let it lay idle. They were keep stirring it up. By what? By fire, by prayer. They kept burning wood. He said, priest shall burn wood upon it every morning so that the fire will not go down. And the hour of prayer, 
Nehemiah, look at what happened. A lame received healing.
That means, yes. The centurion that prayed, the prayer connected him to his divine helper, which is Peter. He made heavens to open because the prayer also disturbed Peter. And Peter too had to go to a place of prayer to know where is this card coming from. And suddenly he ran into trance and heaven opened. Do you see connection? By the midst of just one thing that is common between both of them, Christ, the power of God, prayer. Read that verse 9, please. On the same one. On the morrow, as they went up on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up upon the house to pray about the sixth hour. Oh no. What time do you set for yourself that you don't even meet day by day? Peter, you see in verse chapter 3, at the hours of prayer, the power of God was Also, at the sixth hour, hours of prayer, he did not miss it. He did not miss the hour of prayer. This is speaking to each and every one of us. What is taking you away from your hour of prayer? What is pulling you out from your hour of prayer? What do you exchange your hour of prayer for? about you, that look at this woman, look at this man, we are ready to pour out his blessing, but he refused to come, he refused to come, he refused to knock. You see, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus. We go through so many things because we refuse to pray. Oh, what a painless suffering. What a friend we have in Jesus. You see. Do you un don't forget our Anchor scripture? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. To them that are called the Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. You see, when you pray, when you give yourself continually to the ministry of prayer, you will begin to emerge to your passion, step by step, precept by precepts, Jesus prayed and he was transfigured. You see? Because this, you see, there are some blessings that are supposed to run after you. But they, they, those blessings, they are waiting to see the right version of you so that they come to you. You see? And you need prayer to emerge into that version. Those blessings are around you right now. But they are waiting for that, that version of you to emerge before they will creep to you. You see, that is why you see some people, the moment they go to a particular position, you will see a lot of blessing, a lot of benefit just coming to them. You see some people, when they assume a particular office, position, there are a lot of blessings accrue to that office. Amen. You need prayer. That is why the Lord told me a few weeks ago, tell my people to begin to pray for their kingdom benefit. To contend in a place of prayer. To possess their kingdom benefit, to bind the spirit of passion. Hallelujah. 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 Raka shake me by Nika Saka, Nibaraka Shaka. Rebo Hobo shake me by Nika Saki, Nibaraka Soto. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We appreciate you, Lord. We give you all the glory. You, we give you all the honor. Yes, in Jesus' name. Say, whatsoever that has been taking me away from my hour of prayer, in the name of Jesus, I divorce you. I divorce you. I separate myself from you. In the name of Jesus. Say, any group of people, any one part of your woman, 
that always pulling me away from my place of prayer. I separate myself from you in the name of Jesus. You will not hinder me. You will not stop me. I separate myself from you in the name of Jesus. Even if it's food, if it's food that is denying me of my power of prayer, at that moment, I separate myself from food in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, speak to your body. Your body must not take you away from your place of prayer. You know what I mean by that? The time you're supposed to pray, that's where you are feeling hunger. That's where you are feeling some kind of pain. That's where you are feeling sleepy. Yeah. The devil is around. Say my body, my flesh, all you my organs, in the name of Jesus, you will not deny me my hour of prayer. You will not stop me from praying in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Say you, my eyes, you will not take me away from my hour of prayer in the name of Jesus. You, the things of the world, you will not take me away from my moment of prayer in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, when you submit yourself, see, the apostle, Acts chapter 6, verse 4, he said, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the world because they understand the mystery. You see, because what that verse is saying is the same thing that 1 Corinthians 1 24 is saying, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So when he says Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God, and you say you are in Christ, you're supposed to explain the power and the wisdom. Do you get it? Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Is it time to begin? To forsake so many things right now for your time of prayer. To forsake so many things, even if it's friendship that you have to let go, whatsoever it may be, this is the moment to separate yourself, to deliberately separate yourself from all kinds of things that have been hindering you. You know, when, you, when I said a prayer that my eyes will not take me from a place of prayer, you see, it said things of the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And not of the Father, but of the world. So many people, is what they see that lure them away from place of prayer. And the scripture says, the world faded away, and the lust thereof. But he that dwell the will of the Lord abided forever. That is first John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. Praise Jesus. You see, with the word of God, there are times you might be reading, you don't understand. Just keep reading. You will be surprised sometimes when those scriptures are needed. You just see them coming. Because the scripture says in John 14, verse 26, the Holy Ghost, it will bring to your remembrance all what he has told you. Don't say because I'm not getting anything, I'm going to leave it. Pray and continue. You are feeling the spirit. It is not of the flesh. It is the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited nothing. That is why the first Adam was made a living soul. And the second and the last Adam was made the quickening spirit, Jesus. And whosoever that will serve the Lord will serve him in truth and in spirit. And the scripture says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty to do what you're supposed to do. Say in the name of Jesus. Peace of the world. Will not, en will not endanger my life. Will not enslave me. Peace of the world. Will not enslave me. Will not cage my life. In the name of Jesus. Say I refuse to be entangled with the things of the world. In the name of Jesus. Praise Jesus. Please pray. He said the power of God. That is what made the power of God available. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. It's the time to reschedule yourself, to plan your hour of prayer, and ensure that nothing pull you out of it. You know anything that wants to pull you out of it is the enemy. An enemy can come in form of anybody, even from your loved ones. Let us go to this 
book of Songs of Solomon. We're going to round up from there. The book of Solomon. Songs of Solomon, sorry. Chapter 1. Brother Javon, can you please read verse 4? me, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. Thank you. Did you hear what he says? Talking to the king. Now we want to talk to our own king. The king of kings. It says, draw me. We will run after you. Draw me. We will run after you. The king has brought me into his chamber. Do you know the chamber of the king? His private room. You know, Jesus is our king. And it's the bridegroom, we are the, we are the bride. Where does the bridegroom take the bride to? To the room, private room. You see, that is what Jesus is waiting for us, to come to the room. What, do, what does the king and the, the bridegroom and the bride do in the room? They have intimacy. Jesus is calling each of us to intimacy, to his private chamber, to have intimacy. You see, he says, draw me and I will run. We will run after you. We want to cry to the Lord today to draw you to run after him. Let him bring you to his chamber. And we will be we will be glad and rejoice because when you are in the room, in the chamber with the king of kings, there will be joy. Because in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. 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 I want each of us right now. We want to cry to the Lord to draw you nearer, to draw you to his chamber, to his privacy. Where you can have intimacy. Where you can encounter him. And the power of God. And the wisdom of God. Yes. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Sister Teresa, thank you for joining us. Sister Cynthia, Sister Barbara, Sister Sandra, all of you on the Zoom, please begin to cry to the Lord to draw you nearer unto him. To draw you nearer into his chamber. To have privacy, intimacy with the Lord. Let tell him to draw you nearer. Don't say you don't know what to pray about. The Spirit of God will put the word in your mouth. Pray Jesus. Tell him to draw you closer. You want to have intimacy with him in his chamber. He is the bridegroom. We are the bride. That is what the bridegroom and the bride do in the chamber. In the private room. They have intimacy. And when they have intimacy... It will give birth to life. It will give birth to glory in your life. It will give birth to manifestation to your life. In the name of Jesus. Begin to cry. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you,
from you whatsoever injury you to draw near to the Lord. Let the Lord separate you from such. Begin to pray with your mouth. This is the hour. Begin to cry. Begin to cry. You want to have intimacy with the Lord in this chamber. You want to have intimacy with the Lord in this chamber. Cry for him to draw you nearer. Yes. Speak to him. Speak to him. That is his desire. To help us come to his chamber. To have us come to search for him. He said, You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Cry out. His grace is available. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Let every afflictions in the body, let them jump out in the name of Jesus. Let sickness, even in the breast, jump out in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Jehovah. Yes. Yes. Oh, Lord, my God. Everyone among your children at the sound of my voice right now that are having pain in anywhere in their body, let the pain be gone right now in the name of Jesus. Let every trouble in the mind disappear in the name of Jesus. Let confusion be replaced with peace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, my God, I secured the air space of the United States of America. I secure with the blood of Jesus. No weapons targeted against this country shall prosper in the name of Jesus. I repeat, no weapon formed against this country shall prosper in the name of Jesus. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem in the name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified. May the peace of God find its expression in our homes in our name of Jesus. Yes, let the peace of peace, let the peace of peace take over in our homes in our in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father, I thank you. I bless your name. Thank you, Father. I speak to your life. Your children will not dishonor you in the name of Jesus. The honor you deserve, they will give to you, including their spouses, in the name of Jesus. The wisdom to live with them, to deal with them, to interact with them, with that only is upon you right now, in the name of Jesus. The grace to intercede, receive, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Yes. Blessed be the holy name. Blessed be the holy name. Blessed be the holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Let everybody say this prayer. Say, in the name of Jesus, I will not be used by any man to fulfill the will of flesh, to fulfill the will of the devil. In the name of Jesus. Say, by the grace of God, I will not fulfill my own will, but the will of the Lord. But the will of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Say, every battles of the night, I overcome you by the blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus. Every battle of the day, I overcome you by the blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, I thank you. I bless your name. I give you all the glory. Thank you for what you have done in Jesus' mighty name. Let us begin to appreciate God. Let us begin to thank God. Let everybody begin to thank God for what he has done. Father, we bless you. For you have blessed us. We thank you. We appreciate you. We are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you for that which you have done. Hallelujah to your name. Glory be to